Hello, I'm Seti Yafor, and I invite you to join me on a journey, the Cold Tour 2020. We have assembled a great team of extreme cold water swimmers who will challenge themselves, their bodies and minds to the limit. This journey demands nothing less. The aim is to swim in the glacial lakes in the South Island of New Zealand in the middle of winter. I am your host, and you will also hear from accomplished cold water swimmer, Simon Freeman. As you can see, having a look around here, it's probably going to be the coldest swim of the trip, and probably cooling uh, under five degrees. Who will give us some incredible insights into this amazing experience. So strap yourself in and come with us as we fly to Queenstown for the start of the cold tour. After arriving at Queenstown Airport and loading the van, anticipation was high. The team wasted no time and soon found our way to Lakeside at the breathtaking Lake Wakatutu. This is the site for Swim One. Welcome to the Cold Tour. You know, every time I get down here to Queenstown, the, the, the beauty of the place just never ceases to amaze me. But this time there's just an underlying job at hand kind of feeling. Yeah, it was straight into Lake Wakatipu for the team. It had a water temperature of around about 8.9 and air temperature of around about 6 degrees C. They might look like a bunch of ragtag swimmers, but there's actually been some thought put into the team that we've assembled. There's no spring chickens. We're ranging from 42 to 65. There's a huge depth of experience in here, so don't be fooled by our looks. There are, of course, the risks of cold water swimming, and the risks are many, but the quick onset of hypothermia and cardiac arrest is probably the two primary possibilities. The acclimatisation in Wakatipu and the lakes at hand is actually a really important part of the process. Not the 5C that we need to have an official ice kilometre, but a real important part of the acclimatisation process. I told you it was going to happen, right? <laughs> Good to be done. Good for the first round. With the first cold tour swim done at Lake Wakatipu, it was time to regroup take in the natural beauty of Lake Wakatipu, warm up and plan for the next three days. After a solid night's sleep, the team woke to icy conditions and were eager to head to Lake Moak, a nearby lake to Queenstown, approximately 20 minutes drive, with the aim of finding colder water for the second swim of our tour. The air temperature is fresh and steady wind gusts of up to 30 knots, making the proposition of the swim an interesting one at best. Like usual, the video doesn't show just how windy it was at Lake Moak today. Solid 20 knots with gusts far exceeding that. We planned and mitigated risk as much as possible. After all, despite what viewers may think, we're not actually trying to kill ourselves. Diane, the tour paramedic, will go into the water first with the swimmers on an inflatable raft just in case a rescue is needed. The water temperature today was 6.6 .6 degrees Celsius, which was a full centigrade and a half cooler than yesterday's Wakatipu swim. But hey, that's why we're here. It's fair to say that Lake Moak was all going to plan until a strong gust of wind came through, knocking the expensive camera gear into the lake. Unfortunately, wasting so much footage that we had of that swim and so much audio. Wind got up yep. and it just it caught the very light inflatable boat that I was in and just carried me down the lake. So yep. no matter how hard I was paddling, I, I was going backwards while I was trying to go forward. So I bought mission. And then I got rescued by the swimmer. <laughs> After Lake Moak and after a brief rest for lunch, the team decided on a second swim for the day in Lake Wakatipu, and this time we found 9.6 degrees Celsius water temperature. Everyone stayed in the water for approximately 20 minutes and 1100 metres, which wasn't too bad for the second cold swim of the day. I was a little bit worried initially about how to recover from, you know, two swims in one day, because I haven't done that before. But it was actually, it was actually easier, it was good. I think there's a lot to say about acclimatization, so that one was good. Right. And as you can see, the scenery is unbelievable, right? 
Day three broke to a southerly blast, and plans to visit Milford Sounds by chopper were abandoned, but the team soon found a likely body of water for the third swim at Lake Harwia. 9.8 degrees Celsius is rather warm today than yesterday. Yeah, it's toasty today, man. We could we could almost, you know, have a suntan. Uh, I didn't pack sunblock, but all good. Today's warm. Today's warm. What are the preparations for you personally for this particular swim today? Um, so, <laughs> uh, the preparations up until this stage have just been swimming in, in Auckland in, uh, in as cold water as we can find, skins. Um, most of that's been sort of 12 to 13 degrees for up to maybe an hour, an hour and a half at a time. Um, but like I say to my mates, um, th this isn't about swimming, you know, this is it's more about a mental sort of challenge and a, a bit of a, a, a challenge to myself to prove to my kids that they can do anything. Okay, the swimmers are entering the water. Uh, they know their bodies are really acclimatised to expecting a cold touch. With a wind chill of 11 degrees here at Lake Awea, out, outside, the wind chill factor, so 9.9, 9.8 degrees Celsius is not going to be that much different to being outside. The camera crew today have just reported that the wind is too high to put the drone up in the air. The swimmers have been on the move for five minutes. Every swimmer will have their own process for managing the cold. We have Sylvia coming now into shore. Sylvia, how was that? Cold. <laughs> I found it really difficult to get my breathing when I first got in. But then once I got going, I was fine. But initially I was like really struggling to breathe. But, and then there were some massive waves over there. It was brilliant. So we have uh, Rebecca coming to the end of her swim. And uh, Diane the medic is there on shore um, to make sure that they are all okay and they have all their faculties. As you can see, it's a bit rough here. The wind has just picked up to maybe 22, 25 knots. And Diane, our faithful medic, is doing a great job getting uh, Bex out of the water. How was that? Amazing, amazing, yeah. That's, that's a big word. Tell us what was amazing about this swim. Oh, it's a big swell out there. Um, we were in for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, it's just, it's, a, it's amazing. <laughs> it's just great. <laughs> okay, get warm. Talk to you again soon. Any different to the swims yesterday? Uh, three or four degrees, you start to feel the difference. But it's that wind chill factor on your back too, I think that really starts to get you. But no, it's a good little swim. Go to sleep out there. About 26 minutes, 27 minutes, so might be time to go and get warm now, eh? I think it's going really well. The guys um, way out, outperformed what I thought or what my expectations were. Um, coming into this, I didn't know anything about cold water swimming, so I did a whole lot of research, watched a lot of YouTube clips, um, saw the madness of the craziness, so I just tried to learn what to look out for. So some of the guys are swimming a little further, so the risk of hypothermia, losing their concentration is something that we'll be watching out for and when they come out of the water which we'll be looking out for these guys too is that excessive shaking as the warm blood that's gone to the core drops back out to the uh, the arms and legs and they shake uncontrollably and lose their mind for a little bit <laughs> very very cold <laughs> A um, bit of hypoxia, I'd say. It takes half an hour to an hour for them to recover, so just making sure that the um, their warm up is slow and gradual. So the the guys are up there now, hopefully stripping off all their wet gear, putting on a whole lot of dry gear, getting something warm into them to just warm up from the inside out, and um, hopefully when the other two come back, um, it'll be all good. Susan and Duncan have been in the water for uh, 40 minutes. It's a little bit hard to get out of a lake site today because of the uh, rocky shores. Are you feeling okay? I'm feeling good. So that's 1730 meters. How's the tour going so far for you? Uh, it's been amazing. Dunk, how are you mate? Uh, better now that I can hear you. Hi Teti. Yeah. Um, that was lekker, hey? It was really, it was really tough getting out that side. Um, 
I think the wind, like I said earlier, was a, a lot bigger than what it looks standing on the side. You know, obviously the culture, we, we're looking for, for under five degrees and uh, we're looking to do a kilometer, maybe a mile. Um, yeah, cold is what we're looking for. That's a wrap on uh, this particular swim at Lake Hawe. We are looking forward to the next location. Join us. This is a serious day. Um, finally, the weather gods have smiled upon us, and it looks like we can get the hallies up. So, with the altitude, we can get you know, we're, we're hoping to get under five C. That's the goal. But um, yeah, this is the <laughs> this is the real McCoy today. Look at that. Doesn't get any better. Magic. Day four saw us arriving at the headquarters for Air Milford at Queenstown Airport, where we had a great briefing from Anthony Sproul, general manager of this wonderful family business. So what we're going to do, we'll take off probably out to the west, we'll fly you along Franklin Avenue, past Queenstown Township, we'll fly along Lake Wakatapu, New Zealand's longest freshwater lake. We'll come up here through the Bond Valley. So the Bond here is one of our glaciated valleys. We'll see down um, towards Tiana, down to get a great view of Lake Tiana. So there are some squalls coming through here at the moment, um, just a little front line passing up the coast, so that's going to determine what we're going to do with the day. Uh, if this trip wasn't exciting enough, with all the cold swimming and the hectic winds, we now get to jump into musical planes and um, everybody's pretty excited and the pilot says he's got about half an hour of experience, so we should be good. I'm super excited and I can't wait to look down at all the views and it's just going to be stunning. Our plan today was to head to Lake Tianau and from there transfer to Choppers where we could access some higher glacial lakes. They might have seen the red boat in Queenstown Bay, the catamaran there, some discoveries they used to go across down there. So if we were going to take you guys to North Tianau, it would normally be in North Valley on the right been flying over the Southern Alps and uh, enjoying a scenic flight, it's easy to be lulled into a false sense of security and forget the adventure that actually lies ahead and what's expected of you. This was probably no different for the rest of the team and it would certainly apply to myself. Before long we landed and unfortunately experienced another weather delay of two hours waiting for the weather that would allow the choppers to arrive and take us up to the higher elevation lakes. This time was spent with then taking us on a guided walk of the nearby Lake Mistletoe. <laughs> Finally, the weather began to clear, and after a quick coffee, the team was told to get ready. Right, so, phase two, so the heli guys are just getting ready now. They're going to bring two squirrels, so they're going to bring two of the big machines. You know, so, we just want to do all our as much as you can. So, shall we put our. So, get ready. So I'm, so yes, we'll get, we'll just put our Minimise everything you need to. Fair to say that anticipation was exceptionally high. The funny thing is, as mentally and physically ready as you think you are, hopping into a chopper in your swim gear and heading off for uh, mountains in the distance with ice-covered lakes or lakes that were recently ice-covered still, uh, still makes you think, what on earth have I done? It is absolutely spine-tingling. The first glimpse of the Acheron lakes were pretty daunting. There's these lakes that are covered by snow. There's ice around the edges. It's real. There is no more faking it. So here we are guys, yep, Lake Acheron, small little lake tucked up above Lake Tianau. Uh, as you can see, having a look around here, it's probably going to be the coldest swim of the trip. We're probably cooling uh, under five degrees. I think the guys are just about to take a temperature check now. We're in business here, target of minus or five degrees or less is with us, 4.8, 4.7. In some respects, I don't want to hear what temperature it is, but um, a couple of the guys are going to try an ice kilometre here, so that's a kilometre in a sub five degree environment, and the rest of us will probably just see how long we can go for before the, the wheels start to fall off. So uh, yeah, here it is. I've got to get on with it. We've been uh, flying over these lakes since I was a little nipper, so 30 odd years, and uh, never would I have dreamed of actually touching down on the Akron Lake, let alone going for a swim, so in the snow. Check it out. Looking forward to it. 4.8 degrees here at the Akron Lakes, 4,000 feet up above Lake Tiana. The plan was to split the group into two. Myself, Sylvia and Rebecca did the first shift, with Duncan and Susan doing the second. Even Ants, our fixed wing pilot and general manager of Milford Air, put a wetsuit on and gave it a go, much to the delight of the team. 
People talk about the higher elevations of Mount Everest being the death zone. Well, it's similar, I guess, for ice swimming in so much as that as soon as you enter this water, you are well and truly deep within the death zone. I'm just absolutely aware of a mental dashboard. And as I enter the water in these sort of sub five degree temperatures, the dashboard's got lots of dials on it. The dials might be what direction am I heading? How's my technique? Am I cramping? Uh, what's my distance from shore? Uh, what's my swim plan? As the effects of the cold start to take effect, tunnel vision starts to occur and dials in order of importance start to fall off the dashboard until really there's one that's just left that's telling me either I'm alive or I'm not. It's well and truly the death zone. So the body's reaction to extreme cold is, is not entirely dissimilar to the body's reaction to extreme heat. Controlling that, controlling your breathing through it, and maintaining a strong mental headspace is, is absolutely paramount. First out of the water was Sylvia, then followed by Rebecca, and then myself from the first group. Unfortunately, my watch froze over and accordingly, the final distance and the final time was not recorded. But it had stopped at 850 metres in 16 minutes. Fortunately, I had done over 19 minutes, so I'll call it an unofficial ice kilometre. The coldest part's about to kick in in probably the next five to ten minutes. Where so right, go, si? That's all right, I'll get sorted. So right now we're sort of... You know, all the blood's going to have to go back into the, uh, the arms and legs and then we have to come back into the core. So the real pain and the real drops probably in the next five to ten minutes. We're probably sounding a bit drunk, aren't I? Yeah, pretty. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was good. It was good in the water. Um, I lasted more than I thought I would. But now my feet are sore. Really sore. I'm just a bit nervous at the moment, <laughs> looking forward to getting in there and, and just doing it. Off yeah, and with the snow and stuff there, around, mate. it's just spectacular, but it just adds that extra little layer of anxiety. But yeah, we're all good. Good luck, guys. All the best. Have fun. Next up was Susan and Duncan, and they were keen to get into it. The goal now is to swim an official ice kilometre in the 4.8 degrees Celsius water available to us. This was going to equal well over 20 minutes swimming for the guys. We had to keep a close eye on them. Just two weeks ago, the Acheron lakes were actually frozen over, so our timing, to a degree, was absolutely perfect. One of the nice things about being in the first team is you get to watch the second team, and watching my friends Susan and Duncan challenge themselves and overcome their challenges was nothing short of amazing. To do a swim of 20 minutes in 4.8C is truly a superhuman feat. The fact that they're my friends and you're enjoying the moment with them is even more special. Day four done, the mission is now accomplished. Duncan and Soon have completed their ice kilometer and that's now going to be officially lodged with the International Ice Swimming Federation. Due to such, they now qualify to attempt the next level of ice swimming, which is the ice mile. The team lifted off from the Acheron Lakes with a huge amount of satisfaction. The swimmers discovering just how much their bodies can perform in an extreme cold water. It was a huge learning curve for us all. So we've caught these choppers back down to TR now and we're transferring to the fixed wing, but unfortunately we did have one little slight delay waiting for our wee South African mate to uh, almost regain consciousness again. <laughs> Come on! Pull it back again, can we just check, is he with us? <laughs> with Duncan now recovered, it was time to let Ian Milford get us safely back to Queenstown. And that's the end of the Cold Tour 2020. And as we leave Queenstown to return to Auckland, the sense of achievement among the team is overwhelming. It goes to show that the mind is a powerful tool in overcoming mind-bending obstacles. I hope you've enjoyed watching. See you at the next journey.